Welcome back to the Garden Hutch. Today we're going to discuss week 34 of 2022. Let's get going. Week 34 was fantastic. The weather was awesome. Almost all week, the highs were in the low 90s. Uh, the lows were in the upper 60s or low 70s. So all the plants are loving that. There's blooms everywhere. Um, the blooms are actually starting to set because like we said, the highs are uh, in the low 90s, not like upper 90s or triple digits or anything. Um, now we did have a couple days where the feels like temperature got over 100. But I mean, let's be real, it's August, right? That's gonna happen. Um, let's see here. What else happened? We were able to get caught up a lot in the yard So we weren't mowing or anything because we didn't you know the drought and all of that kind of stuff So most of the yard didn't need it uh, Everything was dying off. So we kind of let everything go but after the rain everything grew quite a bit We got a lot of Sun. It felt good actually to be out cutting the grass. That's weird to say in August, but it nonetheless um, It is what it is. The other thing that we did is we spent a lot of time back here getting uh, the top garden ready to go for our fall planting. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that real fast. Khaleesi, are you enjoying this weather? And she's loving it. All right, so let's just take a stroll through here real fast. Um, I did a whole video on the process of getting the soil and stuff ready. So I'll put that, uh, put a link up here above. Uh, but the thing that I'm most proud of is um, this carrot bed. We're not gonna be able to plant it in the fall, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> put my hand on there uh, and it's it's still pretty warm so uh, it's just not worth the risk because I, I want this to be perfect so what I'm doing is I'm going to put a little bit of sand some topsoil um, just to make this whole bed the whole 22 foot of it perfect to grow carrots so in the springtime we really look forward to seeing how that works out uh, but you can see down here we have gotten the new compost worked in really well with the stuff on the bottom so one of the things, again, that I like to use as a judge is the straw. Um, you can see it, right? So when you go through, you put a couple inches of compost on top of it, and then you want to work some of that straw up to the top of um, the garden bed. And the reason for that is it allows the compost to sort of work its way through the entire uh, bed so it's not all concentrated in one spot. Also, the straw... I'm going to continue using this. I'm really impressed with how much of it broke down. Uh, you can see there's still a little bit of it that's in there and it adds a nice amount of organic matter. And what that does is it keeps your soil from getting too compacted. Um, I believe me and Leslie have talked about it. We're also thinking about adding some uh, vermiculite into these beds over the course of between now and when we plant them again next summer. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to show this off and you know down there are beef masters we'll take a quick look at these we're letting our we left this basil in the ground we dried all the rest of it but we want this to go to seed um, it's doing really well these flowers smell incredible and it is not uncommon to come out throughout different points of the day to see hummingbirds um, around your basil once it starts going to flower we're also uh, still getting beef masters. They're not near as big right now, I think, you know, because it's August. But what we're hoping is if we're diligent, keep them alive, uh, we keep getting, you know, decent sized tomatoes. Maybe um, once the temperatures become a bit more agreeable, we can get larger tomatoes. But, all right, speaking of what we're pulling right now, let's go take a look at the pallet garden. So we'll start here with the corn. We were so excited we were going to get some awesome corn, and I think I talked about this last week too, but it seems like every time uh, corn comes in, we'll come outside, and you can see we'll have little raccoons. We'll come through and open them up and eat the sides out of our dadgum corn. Uh, so anyway, so I've, I haven't been fortunate enough yet to uh, capture the raccoons. We have a little land management area that we can take our raccoons and possums and stuff to, but... So anyway, regardless, they're still eating our dad gum stuff. Um, we are getting a lot. Now look at Leslie. Yay. We're getting a lot of cantaloupes uh, coming in. Our watermelons, we still we have two. None of them, neither one of them, are ready to go yet. But again, we only planted the one watermelon plant in here with the three different cantaloupes. This guy over here, this 
peppers have just they're still going um we had several people over this week picking banana peppers but this weather has just triggered um, a lot of growth in our peppers we've had a lot of bell peppers and you can see they're still coming on um, we picked I don't know another uh, half dozen somewhere between a half dozen and a dozen like fist sized bell peppers so that worked out really well people love those things and then over here we have our cayenne peppers and we we're actually going on the internet and just begging people to come by and get these things I've stuffed jars full of them for my apple cider vinegar and I just don't know what else to do with them so I'm hoping that we can give these away I just don't want them to go to waste um, down here we're acclimating our tomatoes that'll go in the ground uh, this week so by the time we do our vlog next week we'll have these Roma tomatoes in the ground so and then up here of course we have our chard it's doing fantastic we're eating it salads and then parsley and this is what i was really excited about to show everybody you can see after it looked like i butchered our cherry tomato plants they are coming back in full force uh, let's go around here so you can see what i'm talking about you see all these green cherry tomato i mean it looks almost like we're starting the spring all over again the only downside is down here on the bottom, you can see how um, how close those are to the ground. Those those tomatoes will never get any of those. Our chickens will eat every one of those dadgum things. But I just kind of wanted to give everybody an idea of how the canopy sort of set back in after we did the trimming. Um, you know, you can tell it's in a it's kind of in a different position. Uh, it's much more like south towards the camera and on the western side of the bed whereas earlier uh, a lot of it was on the northern side of the bed so that's one of the reasons why you go through and trim it at different times of the year um, we also look at this something really wanted in to the greenhouse um, my guess is leslie and i were talking about it we think it's probably one of our cats uh, there was probably a um some kind of critter in there uh, more than likely a bug or a moth or whatever they wanted to get to so um anyway so the netting is not good for keeping bugs out anymore so we'll have to do something about that hey chickens napoleon where are you going here lately he's been nice we'll let it slide for a while Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I thought I'd take a moment to just kind of piddle around in the garden this morning. And I wanted to show you some fun things that I've discovered while checking on cucumbers. This little beauty, I don't know if you could see her, but she is, some people call her banana spiders. Um, they're a typical orb weaver garden spider. She is developing her little nest and web so she can form her egg sac and she is ready to do so. So we kind of leave these little friends in the garden. I've discovered I'm terrified of spiders, but these not so much just because they're so beneficial in your garden. And we always have a few that come back every year. And this little lady is, she's fantastic. Fun fact, they do overwinter and they look like they're dead, but they do come back the next year. Um, so just kind of wanted to share that fun fact with you. She's pretty. Found her this morning. Another interesting thing that we discovered, a lot of people have mentioned that they have been growing sweet potatoes for, for decades, for a long, long time, and they never get a blossom or any kind of bloom on their sweet potatoes. Came out this morning, and we discovered a bloom on our sweet potatoes now of course it's not open right now but it's beautiful it's purple sometimes they'll come out white um, this is the second one we've noticed since we've been growing these sweet potatoes this year but i thought oh, we would, wanted to share this with you just because it's proof they do bloom just not often so thank you and just wanted to kind of share some fun exciting things this morning about sweet potatoes and beneficial insects in your garden, especially spiders and non-beneficial things in your garden, such as this little menace that's been digging in our beds.
So to wrap this week up, I have just a few more smaller things to go over. Uh, we did go down and buy all of the seeds in bulk for our uh, fall garden. While we were there, we picked up extra so that we didn't have to worry about it in the spring. The reason I bring it up is we got all the seeds, literally all the seeds to plant the gardens that we just went over for less than $6. So um, if you haven't done fall gardening, I highly recommend it. It's incredibly affordable, uh, at least here in zone 7B. You can pull vegetables all the way up until, you know, we did it last year. We were literally pulling carrots the day before Christmas last year. So that was fantastic. Um, let's see what else. We started lettuce. We I started uh, 40, I think 46 lettuce plants to go in the bed with the radishes. Um, the chickens, man, we're loving these chickens, right? They're a little, they're not really destructive in the yard, which is fantastic. They do eat all of the uh, plants from the garden that they can reach. So that was a learning experience, but we're loving it. Um, the bees are also killing it. We did an inspection on the beehive and I think I showed last week where I added um, a new super to it. So that was fantastic. But the reason I brought that up is there's a really good chance that we can get another um, three and a half to four gallons this fall. And if that's the case, that's just ridiculous. If we can get that much honey every fall and every spring, um, I'm going to have to <laughs> learn what to do with that honey. So uh, maybe I'll make some meat or something. That sounds good. Okay, well, I guess I'm rambling now. So as always, I appreciate every one of you that have made it to the end. It means a lot to us. If you enjoy this content, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, it's free for you. goes a long way in helping us reach our goals. If you enjoyed this video, hit the little like button down below. Until next time, I hope all you folks take care of yourselves. Peace.